This video is on why assisted suicide should be legal, especially for those who are called mentally ill. Because everyone in America knows that it's okay to victimize somebody who is called mentally ill. If you call somebody mentally ill, it's okay to beat them up. It's okay to steal from them. It's okay to assault them. It's okay to threaten them. Because nobody fucking cares about them. Now, the easiest way to victimize somebody is to get them alone. So when you've got one person by themselves, standing up for themselves, against multiple assailants, those multiple assailants have the upper hand because there's multiple of them. They all lie and it makes it okay, correct? because you're the one who's mentally ill. Now I'm going to tell you about the uh, cops here in Chapel, Nebraska before Natalie died. Now, I had some people here in town who said that they would help me, like Brenda Dickinson and Laura Nelson, and these people just never did. I can't take care of myself. When I go in to speak to the police, I get the mentally ill treatment. When it comes to me being assaulted and me having my life threatened, the cops don't give a fuck. But somebody calls me in and says, Sean's suicidal. Oh yeah, they are all over that shit. Why? because they don't want to get in trouble for the shit that they did and anything that they can do to destroy my life and make it so that I can't speak in court makes it much more better. Makes it easier for them to get away with the things that they did. When I was being threatened in uh, 2017, I went to the police on multiple occasions. I didn't start off going to the police. I started off going to the source. I tried getting a hold of Natalie and Alicia Bollinger and Maddie Boa to get them to put a stop to it. When they wouldn't, that's when I went to the police. Now here's the thing, the police say if I'm being threatened or harassed, I should call 911. With all due respect, I tried that already. I tried that here in Chapel, Nebraska, and I got blown off. <clears throat> and then, when I went in a second time, see here's the, the first time. Time that I had to deal with that when I called 911. It was uh, Officer Jordan Anderson. Now, this wasn't my first interaction with him. When I left Virginia, I was suicidal. I was suicidal when I went to Virginia. Now, there's a difference between being suicidal and wanting your life to end. You guys would do well to learn the difference. Getting treated like you're mentally ill? Yeah. That's suicide worthy. That's something that'll make anybody want their fucking life to end. Because you're not a human being at that point. You're just mentally ill. And then anybody can victimize you anytime they want. The first time that I went to the police about this situation, I try to get a hold of Natalie, Alicia, and Maddie to let them know what the fuck was going on and ask them to put a stop to it. Of course, they've 
blocked the world instead of talking to me like a human being. Well, you goddamn right I was frustrated and pissed off. Now, I had people who had already assaulted me, already pushed me around, and so on and so forth. And yeah, I was begging people to kill me, just like I do today. Someone please kill me. I do mean that. The police take full advantage of this. On January 8th of 2017, Brenda Dickinson called me in for being suicidal, and I was taken to the hospital in Sydney, Nebraska. By two state patrol officers and Officer Jordan Anderson. They should have taken a police report about the abuse that I was going through. But they didn't. However, this wasn't an unpleasant trip. At least they hooked me up with Nicole Peralta and Tamara. Now, there were three other occasions that had happened in 2017 after that. Two of those, it was Officer Jordan Anderson that I encountered. And one of those times, all I know it was a fat cop. I don't know if it was Officer Hahn or not. But they just outright didn't fucking care. See, when a man is being abused, people tell him he has to man up. They're not even willing to look at what's going on. But if a woman thinks that somebody might abuse her, the police go out of their way to destroy that man's life. A lot of people do. And that's something that Natalie, Alicia, and Maddie weren't fucking understanding. Now, I also went to the police in Colorado, and mind you, this whole time, I thought Natalie was still in Virginia. They kept telling me it's out of jurisdiction, out of jurisdiction, out of jurisdiction, or I just needed to man up, or they have real police work to do. Well... I'd been speaking out about how the police treat the homeless for years by this point. Especially the police in Boulder, Colorado. However, I recorded witnesses in this very town. Now, since this video is specifically about the police here in Nebraska, and specifically here in Duell County, we're going to stick with that. Now we will fast forward to after Natalie was dead. I came back to Chapel, Nebraska. I was finally able to come back here. See, I couldn't be in the state of Colorado without being assaulted or having my life threatened. And my disability was from here in Nebraska. I needed to be able to get my life back on the line. I needed to be able to get into a safe environment where I didn't have to listen to screaming. Now the police here, including Jordan Anderson, at my grandma's funeral, that whole situation with Ted Bollinger and Alicia Bollinger, they wanted to talk to me, wanted to talk to me, wanted to talk to me. Except Ted was on Alicia's account. Alicia had my phone number. And they made no effort to give me any proof that Alicia was still alive or okay. Now if you guys know anything about Ted Bollinger, you know why that is. Anyway... There was also a situation with Tim Beeson that had happened starting in March of 2017. And of course, 
that was almost a year before she died. Not quite, like nine months or so, eight months. Anyway, after Natalie was dead and the cops in Colorado pulled all of their bullshit, I was denied the right to make a report by every single officer that I encountered. So I had to go to an outside agency and the outside agencies weren't doing a goddamn thing either. I had evidence that they needed to see and needed to record and at no point in time did they. The information that was on those telephones, I tried to get the police everywhere to take a look at. See, it wasn't just slander. It was assaults and threats against my life as a result of that slander. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to just man up, man up, man up. What you guys aren't understanding is the term mentally ill. You're not a human being at that point. Now, Jordan Anderson at my grandma's funeral, well, he didn't give a holy fucking goddamn. Laura Nelson should have come forward on her own about that. However, she's afraid of getting her autistic son taken. And she has said that to me repeatedly. Why is it that people have to be afraid of the police? Why is that? Because Laura Nelson knew what the police did that night was wrong. She also knew that what Graham had said was wrong and she should have spoken up. Nobody actually cares about me. None of the witnesses care about me or they would have tried harder to get the truth out there, but they didn't. This is because they were afraid of being targeted themselves, not just by the police, but also by the public and by the Bollingers. Who do you go to? You're disabled and you don't have the ability to do the things that people are asking. You don't have the money to do the things that people are asking. Yeah, you're fucked. And you should be allowed to die. Jordan Anderson didn't do his job. Sheriff Scott DeCosta knew this. Sheriff Scott DeCosta covered up for the wrongdoing of his officer. And as a result, that officer was allowed to leave so that he didn't have to testify. This isn't the first officer that this happened with, that I had had to deal with. And it wasn't the last one here in Chapel, Nebraska. Since then, Officer Cody Selhorst, who I attempted to tell about this, didn't do his goddamn job. Somebody called it in that I was suicidal and he came out and watched me out at Chapel Lake. He knew I was literally trying to kill myself because I couldn't go to the cops. When I called 911, they blew me off. This is all stuff that needs to be brought forward. However, because I don't have an attorney and because I don't have any money, I can't get that information. I can't trust that the cops aren't going to pull some shady shit if I go in there by myself because they have repeatedly pulled shady shit when I went in there by myself. Repeatedly using Suicide Watch as their excuse to cover up their wrongdoing. Now here's the thing. When a police officer takes you in for something like that, you don't get a say-so. And the places that they take you don't give a fuck about you as a human being. They care about making the cops happy. Fuck the police. 
Now, on at least three occasions, I went in to speak to Sheriff Scott DaCosta about that situation at my grandmother's funeral. In one of those instances, he gave me the body camera footage from that night at my grandma's funeral. He said that it was because Jordan Anderson did not make a police report like he should have because it was a 911 call. Now, if you guys saw that video from yesterday, you're noticing that they tell me if I'm threatened, I should call 911. Fuck that. I don't want Derek going to fucking jail or prison for threatening me. I want him to understand what the fuck is going on. There are a lot of other people that I would like in prison. Like Tim Beeson and Ted Bollinger. And Alicia Bollinger. Because Alicia Bollinger knew that the stuff being said about me was untrue and she never came forward. She is more responsible for her sister's death than Joseph Lopez is. <clears throat> now, with the police not doing their fucking jobs, I finally got someone to go in with me. This is months and months and months after Natalie was killed, and well over a year after the threats and harassment first started, and people think that I should be able to magically fix all of this shit because I'm a man, because I have a penis. Well, that's not how it works. A penis doesn't get rid of autism. It doesn't get rid of PTSD. Now, there is a situation with Officer Cody Selhorst. That was, uh... Well, let's see, there's four instances in 2017 where I dealt with the police here in Chapel, Nebraska. <clears throat> I already went up through all those. And then there's the fifth instance here with uh, Jordan Anderson at my grandma's funeral. And then there were the three times that I went in and talked to Sheriff Scott DaCosta and then there was the time that Molly Smith sat with me, and there was also the situation with Officer Cody Selhorst. That's a lot of talking to the cops to get nothing done. But then, Sheriff Scott DaCosta realized that I was going after his officers for their wrongdoing. And that's when, uh, they started doing everything in their power to abuse the hell out of the suicide watch thing. They outright lied to a woman named Jen Beebe. Now don't get me wrong, I do not agree with the decisions that Jen Beebe made. However, knowing that the police lied to her really puts it in perspective for me and I can't hate her entirely for that. The situation in Scott Bluff was simply the police trying to cover up their wrongdoing by having me diagnosed illegally with bipolar disorder. Well, with all due respect, I am bipolar. I have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. However, it's not bipolar disorder, it's PTSD from shit tons of abuse. Starting when I was a little kid, my mother was abusive, my father was abusive, and I went into an abusive system at a very young age because they couldn't stay off the fucking drugs. The conversation with my Aunt Mary, Mary Schwartz, that I posted up on YouTube, helps to explain that as well. Then, on repeated instances since then, the police here in Chapel have refused to do a goddamn thing, including at least three different situations with Officer Hahn in 2018 
after they realized, or after I got out of the uh, police station, or the Scotts Bluff uh, nut hatch, there was the day that I got out, or the day after rather, um, and then there was, shit, I don't know, there are so many fucking times that I spoke with them, and not once did they ever take a report from me. I literally have to have someone go in with me. I spoke with them outside of the uh, pump and pantry here, that's across from Sean Jepson's old house. And then Officer Cody Selhorst tried to run me out of town over by Brandon Jepson's mother's old house. The Van Winkles owned it, the last I heard. Nick Van Winkle and his wife. And then uh, there was the situation. Let me pause this for a second. There was a situation when they took me to Scotts Bluff in December. That was over the situation in Scotts Bluff when I had been sent there in 2018 while trying to make a police report. The police here in Chapel, Nebraska literally did everything in their power not to do their jobs. Now there's also the state patrol. Law enforcement looks out for law enforcement. They don't give a fuck about the American public unless they're rich. If you're a rich person, they'll do whatever the fuck you want. It's because they're afraid you might have the money to sue them. But with my assumed guilt and the fact that the police repeatedly before Natalie was killed did not do their jobs, Repeatedly, I tried telling them what was going on, and they just kept blowing me off while the abuse continued because the police wouldn't do their jobs. Natalie Bollinger wouldn't speak up. Alicia Bollinger wouldn't speak up, and Maddie Bow wouldn't speak up. There were over 20 instances where I spoke with the police here in Chapel, Nebraska. The police and state patrol. The fact that there are so many just goes to show how difficult it is to get them to do their jobs when they can just say, oh, he's mentally ill. And then they tell the hospitals that you're mentally ill and that they want a diagnosis of bipolar and the hospitals happily oblige them. The hospitals will inject you with drugs for saying, hey, this isn't right. And every time that I told the hospitals that what they were doing was immoral and illegal, they drugged me every single time. See, this is the thing. One of the hospitals that I was at, Clearview Behavioral Health, is getting shut down because they killed a man doing what nearly all of these hospitals did to me. Up in uh, Washington State, I was actually assaulted in the hospital by hospital staff. Similar to Clearview, except in Washington State, well, it was a bit worse. In Washington State, I was able to get a hold of some officers, and they weren't willing to take a report. Every single one of these places that I went to, the officers have the very same protocol when you try to turn in officers. Call you mentally ill and ship you to a different jurisdiction. Try to have paperwork put on you to make you look insane. Meanwhile, there are lots of people who know me, who are familiar with me, who are very well aware that I'm not schizophrenic. Many of them, including Brandon Ratner, and his conversations are on my YouTube as well. The problem is people want to text and assume and go out of their way to twist what I was texting into something that it wasn't. I literally cannot defend myself. 
if I cannot defend myself and I have been made a target so that I have to defend myself, then I should be killed. Because my life is torture. I don't have the money to take care of myself. I don't have the physical ability to take care of myself. And I can't sleep because the things that have happened to me, those over 20 court, or over 20 situations with the police just here in Chapel, Nebraska, as well as the police situations elsewhere, and those hospitals, not one of which took a look at the evidence. Yeah, that's traumatizing as fuck. People telling me to just get over it, just get over it, just move somewhere else. Moving somewhere else isn't going to get me my disability money back. It's not going to get me an honest day in court. It's not going to give me the ability to take care of myself. So what the fuck are you expecting out of me telling me to move somewhere else, move somewhere else, move somewhere else? I've been slowly and steadily writing it all down from one unsafe environment to another. Now, as far as an unsafe environment, the place where I'm at now is unsafe. Now, that doesn't mean that the guy that I'm staying, staying with is a bad person. It doesn't mean that he's going to hurt me. It's the fact that I don't have an income and he's broke. And it's a very temporary situation. Without an income, I cannot take care of myself. Because of the court dates that I was prevented from going to, I cannot get an honest day in court ever again. Because that slander is on my paperwork. The warrants prevented me from getting an honest day in court, prevented me from being able to keep the things that were mine. I needed an advocate, someone to actually show up at fucking court and be a witness. Now, there were some people who went to one or two court dates, like uh, Steve Tomlinson. He went to a court date with me. And you know what? His conversation is recorded here on YouTube as well. I saved this shit for a reason. These people should have written it down. All of these people should have written it down. But they didn't stop to listen. They were too busy giving advice. All of them. And when I was completely fucked because they wouldn't do the right thing because they made bad assumptions and just kept talking over me instead of listening to what was going on. Well, they wanted to be assholes to me for speaking out about it. But that's how everyone treats me. Do I mean literally everyone? Yeah. A lot of these people didn't have the time and that's understandable. But the fact is, the police said that nobody tried to make a police report, and nobody was willing to go in with me, probably because of how I act. No, how I act is frustrated. Because I have to endure so much abuse, and nobody will do a goddamn thing about it because I am an unattractive, broke male. Now that conversation with Ray Ray, that is also on YouTube, shows that I was telling the truth about Amy Spencer, a.k.a. Amy Kalina Kingery. I recorded these conversations for a reason. I don't care if it's legal or illegal to record them. Because without that information being out there for the public, with the hope that one person will actually fucking do something. I have to take the abuse no matter what. And that's not acceptable. Now in the 
deputies from the sheriff's department showed up yesterday. One of the deputies who was there, Deputy Hahn, is one of the asshats who I had an issue with. One of the asshats who I was trying to get a protection order against. See, the police don't give a fuck, especially when they've done wrong. Yeah, they don't want to record anything about the abuse that you've gone through, especially when they've refused to do so in the past. And actually recording it will show that it's something that they should have recorded to begin with. But without somebody willing to go in with me, it's okay to do whatever you want. If Tim Beeson wanted to come shoot me in the head today, nobody would fucking investigate it. They might pretend to, but that's it. If Ted Bollinger showed up to shoot me in the head today, people in this town would turn the other way. Most of them anyway. Assisted suicide should be legal. The way that I was treated by law enforcement and by the hospitals makes me suicidal. That's the difference between being suicidal and wanting to die. The way that I was treated by the public made me want to die. The way that I was treated by the police and the hospitals made me want to kill myself. So keep that in mind. When you decide that you're going to call it in because I'm suicidal, my life is fucking torture. It's torture. There are literally hundreds of stories saved on my Facebook and my YouTube of other people who are going through the same thing, most of them homeless, and none of them to the same degree. Many of them folded because they were afraid of losing their families, losing their children if they came forward. The term mentally ill makes it okay to abuse me. And my family didn't care. They didn't give a fuck. When I was a kid and I was raped, I tried to come forward. I was abused and shot up with drugs for it. Sending me to the hospital does not get the police to look at the evidence. It doesn't get the FBI to look at the evidence. And the hospitals just assume that I must be lying because I'm speaking out about police. And anybody who speaks out against police is automatically the bad guy. Then they want to use marijuana as their excuse not to do anything. Marijuana. I'm going to tell you something. There's a reason that there are medical marijuana states. Because medical marijuana does help. It helps with PTSD. It helps with physical pain. Without the dangerous side effects to your liver that you get from the drugs that they want to feed you. I am for assisted suicide. Matter of fact, there might be a day here shortly when I'm able to actually kill myself. And I keep hoping for that day. There's a lot of people who keep saying that they're gonna help. And that gives me hope. And that hope is what's kept me alive this whole time. Meanwhile, every person who said they're gonna, well, not a single one actually has. Now, there's a lot of people who don't want what they had to say out there in public. I didn't start recording people as far as witnesses go until after that whole situation in Arapahoe County in August of 2018. 
I was released from Larimer County. That's, uh, I was in jail for the situation in Clearview, by the way. And they kept dragging it out and dragging it out and dragging it out. I was assaulted by the staff in Clearview in January, or sorry, February 1st of 2018. And in November of 2018, that court shit was still not resolved. And I was in jail for failure to appear. I was unable to appear because I was incarcerated. And Pamela Carty would not do her job. The cops here in Chapel, Nebraska... I was going to go in with Molly Smith to try to make the police take my report this year. Molly Smith agreed to go in with me. Officer Hahn, who was here yesterday, told Molly Smith that he had been trying to avoid me because I had warrants. I had warrants for trying to speak out about him, and I was sent to Scott's Bluff for trying to speak out. It was in Scott's Bluff where I broke those computers to prevent the, or those computer monitors to prevent the uh, police from locking me up and prevent those drugs from going into me. To this day, no police officer has taken a report from me. Officer Hahn pretended to. I'm not a human being. I spoke out about how the term mentally ill would be used to prevent me from speaking out and prevent me from showing evidence. And since then, the police and the courts have done everything in their power to prove me right. They've done a great job of proving me right. Fuck the police. Now, when you guys want to... Call it in, because I'm talking about wanting to die. Keep in mind that that treatment there is the reason that I want to die to begin with. Calling it in instead of taking an active role is taking an active role to help my predators. The police are my predators. The Bollinger family are my predators. Their friends are my predators, and the American public are my predators. The news are my predators. Because at no point in time did any of these people give a fuck about me. Now, a lot of people wanted to call me selfless. I'm not selfless. And a lot of people wanted to call me selfish. I'm not selfish either. I want equality. I want the same rights as a black man. I want the same rights as a white woman. I want the same rights as a Native American. I don't have the rights that a Native American has. I don't have the rights that a white woman has. I don't have the rights that a black man has, and I don't have the money to go to court. People kept saying, you need to sue these people, you need to sue these people. With what? If you can't show up to court because you don't have the money, and you don't have a vehicle, and you don't have any gas, they automatically win, and you can't take them back to court again. It's called double jeopardy. And that's what none of you are paying attention to. I wasn't even getting enough money to keep myself fed. And this was from people who were donating money to me, and I am thankful and grateful for that. But the fact is, the help that I needed wasn't that. The help that I needed was help getting my disability money back. That is the reason that they were able to victimize me to the point that they were. It's because as soon as Natalie disappeared, all of my disability money was tied up in courts, 
and places where I was abused. So obviously I can't stay in that area if people in that area are abusing me. Does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense to go be homeless somewhere where I am victimized by the police. It makes no sense whatsoever. I cannot defend myself. That's why I needed an autism advocate starting when I turned 18. And I should have had one before then as well. But as soon as I turned 18 and became a legal adult, I should have had an advocate. I didn't have the money to get diagnosed. I didn't have the money when I turned 18 to do any of the things that I needed to do to have a decent life, to be able to take care of myself. And I had a lot of jobs and I worked fucking hard, but people don't pay for shit. When you are not an attractive person and you are considered mentally ill, people who employ you treat you like a charity case and basically you are even if you're a hard fucking worker you're still a charity case you're lucky that they gave you a fucking job and then they want to remind you of that you know Schwartz I put you to work I put you to work that's right you did and I was thankful and grateful for that but you didn't pay me enough to live on no matter how hard I worked Assisted suicide should be legal. If you have the mentally ill tag on you, then your words don't matter. Your voice doesn't matter. You are not a human being. And if you are not a human being, it's easy for people to victimize you. I've had enough of being victimized. I literally want my life to end and locking me up somewhere and drugging me results in things getting broken and me being assaulted. I will never be allowed to defend myself because of all of the things that law enforcement, the Bollinger family and their friends have done. There's a lot of people who expressed to me that they were afraid for themselves and for their children. I wouldn't have had to post that up in public if these people had come forward about it. If Mandy Hughes had gone in with her husband and her daughter to make a report about the fact that they were afraid of the Bollingers and Ted in specific, and the fact that Ted Bollinger Well, Mandy Hughes saw him twice. Twice after Natalie was killed. You goddamn right she was afraid, and she expressed that to me. I literally want my life to end because I will be victimized for the rest of my life, even worse than I've already been victimized. I will be victimized by the police and by the courts and by the public. Anybody who wants to be pissed off at me for speaking out can kiss my ass. There was nobody in my goddamn corner. And I don't have the resources to jump through all the hoops to get someone in my goddamn corner. I don't have a mailbox. I have to depend on somebody else's mailbox. Also, I have to have people send the mail in his name, not mine. Because if the courts send me paperwork, I don't have the ability to send in paperwork 
to explain to them that I literally can't show up to court because I am too broke. I am too broke because of abuse.